When it comes to inclusivity, a lot of companies will talk a big game using buzzwords and inclusive language in their marketing. But when it's time to actually do the work to make their companies more inclusive of all people, we're left scratching our heads wondering, where did all that talk of inclusion go? At Mozilla Companies, we're putting in the work with the help of Dr. James Knight, author of Heart, A Journey Toward Cultural Humility, our executive team has been working to create a culture of humility throughout the company. Our CEO, Tony Mazzella, sat down with Dr. James Knight and our chief HR officer, Christy Andrews, to discuss what cultural humility means and the future of Mazzella companies as it relates to being an inclusive workplace. Let's check it out. Oftentimes, most people live around people that look like them. Mm -hmm. Right, and when you encounter diversity, it's usually when you show up to work or you mm -hmm. go to school or something like that. And sometimes that's a struggle. And so when we are in our homogenous communities, so to speak, it's easy to make these assumptions. But as we begin to have humble conversations and we encourage people to be a little bit more open and curious, we found out that we're a lot alike and that we wanted the same thing. But in order to create that connection, we all have to buy into the idea of heart. Like, I'm gonna humble my heart. I'm gonna allow you to teach me. And what happened as a result of it, it created greater innovation, greater collaboration. And that's what we're hoping for with Mozilla, right? Is that when people are working on the floor, wherever they have to contribute, you know, we hope that people have greater connection and greater collaboration as far as what they do um, here at, at the company. And so I, I just think humility enhances the culture. So how would you define the culture of humility? So the way I define culture humility is that it's a humble approach to listening and learning that requires us to open our hearts to three things. Number one, curiosity. Number two, self-reflection. And number three, empathy. So if we open our hearts up to be a little bit more curious, to be empathetic, and also engage in self awareness that's necessary so that we know ourselves, when we're encountering people of different backgrounds, then it makes for a smooth interaction where we both can give each other just who we are, right? Yeah. We can exchange, so it's an opportunity to learn. Um, so it's really about, in a nutshell, suspending what you think you know before you actually get a chance to talk to people. What is amazing about it is that oftentimes we're so busy in life that we don't quiet ourselves to get to know what's in our heart, to be able to like learn what is keeping me from connecting with that person. Maybe there's things that I have to let go of because sometimes we don't give people a chance because of what they might look like, how they might talk and so forth. And so I think the highlights whenever I'm working with people is to see the growth, right? Is to see people kind of have that epiphany moment where they're like, wow, um, this is really awesome and this is what I needed. But the other thing that I love about this is that it's not just for like the work environment. Like when I started to internalize this as a husband, as a father, it increased the relationship that I had with the people that I live with. You know, what does it mean to be a humble dad? To like listen to your son as your son tells you about his day and he's telling you about this thing that he's passionate about. Mm -hmm. That's where we struggle is that we make everything so transactional yeah. that sometimes we miss those opportunities to say, how was Thanksgiving for you? Like, mm -hmm. you know, what do you need? Then all the other stuff just goes away. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. yeah, naturally, right. Yeah. One of the things that people got to be wondering is why is this important in a workplace? Yeah, I think it's important in the workplace because one of the things that we're finding uh, when we look at some of the research is that people want to feel like they matter and people want to feel like that they're connected at the places where they work. You're giving a lot of your day to the place where you work, right? Mm -hmm. So it's important that you feel like I belong and I feel like I can bring myself and I feel like, you know, people care about me. And so everybody wants to feel that. And what we know is when people feel that, they do better work, right? right? And they're more apt to take risks. They're more apt to be more creative. And so that's why it's so important is that if we can be more connected and we can see each other and give room for people to be able to be themselves, it will allow them to be able to do better work and have better relationships. As you said, you spend so much of your, work, your day and your life at work amongst your work family, that if you make that environment as comfortable as their environment is elsewhere, um, outside, 
and uh, then then they want to be there and be around those people just as much as they want to be around mm-hmm. their family and their friends and things like that. And right. and and those kinds of things do matter to people. When I've seen it work really really well, you hear people say things like, "I don't feel like I'm driving into work. I feel like I'm I'm going to." do what I love to do and be yeah, around right. people that I love. And it doesn't feel like a job. It doesn't feel like work. That's it, true. We uh, spent time on the individual chapters. We ran through some scenarios and and talked about what's a great way to think about it and maybe what's the some of the traditional way to think about things versus the pause and saying, hey, I'm going to be curious. I'm, I'm going to try to understand what's going on. It was interesting because everybody on the team, month after month, looked forward to the hour that we spent in our leadership meeting, um, just challenging our own thoughts and beliefs and that. And, and obviously, James did a great job of generating you know, the conversations that uh, really helped us. But um, mm-hmm. I think yeah. the concept of tying it back to humble is something we all got. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that. I mean, it was the topics were different. The challenges were different. And the discussions all took a different turn almost every week. And, I, you know, and like you said, I would bring it back to being a woman in the workplace and growing up in, in having a certain amount of, of judgment or perception brought. Mm-hmm. And, right. um, you know, and so for somebody else, it was a different um, experience from maybe their childhood or something like that, that they carried forward into the workplace and, you know, uh, caused a certain amount of angst for them. So, yeah, it was um, really good discussions. And that's what we hope to bring uh, through the rest of the organization. Well, well in our team, people you know, think. we've got people from different parts of the country. And even right. that was a, yeah. often a topic yeah. Yeah. in our group was mm-hmm. that how people looked at, at things from this part of the country or yeah. that part of the country. Yeah, absolutely. That was always an interesting topic. Yeah. 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 I think, and that was the goal, right, is really to create that cognitive dissonance to where you were able to kind of discover some blind spots that you might not know you had. Right. To say, okay, this is something that I could be more mindful of that's going to help me to be better. Yeah. That was the goal. The goal is to get better. <laughs> yeah, create awareness you know, and yeah, be better, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That was the goal. Yeah. Most people ask, like, what's in it for me, right? Mm-hmm. And I think oftentimes you begin, as you get older, you begin to recognize that the thing that brings you the most joy is the thing that you do for others, mm-hmm. right? At the heart of Culture Mill is like putting others over self, right? When you go home, the people you care about, the people you love, and so forth, Ask yourself, how can I really begin to live out this virtue of humility, to really have greater heart in the relationships that I have in my life? And watch how much it will impact and make your life richer as a result of that. Bottom line is, I think it's a win for everybody, even if you just learn one little thing. Cultural humility isn't just in the words we say, but it's the actions that we present to others. If you want to learn more about Mazzello's culture, check out this video. But before you head over there, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. We put out videos every single week, and you won't want to miss what we have in store. My name is Kay, and I'll see you around.